Thanks to the supporters of channel member Roman Spartan 3. As expected, that outside chance of a title challenge that we thought we might have, we, we, we never really properly had. There's still a very small chance we might hold on to a Champions League spot. More likely, though, is that we can continue our FA Cup run and hopefully win a piece of silverware. So that is the goal for today. Hello and welcome to part 113 of Born Again. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have a home game against Norwich in the FA Cup. I think it's quarterfinal? Fifth round. The FA Cup fifth round. And we're also away against Norwich in the Premier League. Double Norwich. What more could you possibly want? Talking of things that are coming up today, I'm streaming on Twitch again tonight. Twitch.tv slash Lelujo. I stream there every Monday, Wednesday, Thursday and Sunday. Today is one of those days, if I can read a calendar correctly hopefully i'll see some of you over there um since you were last with me as mentioned in the little intro things that things have gone wrong i mean it was always going to happen um as soon as we started it was as soon as that happened as soon as the crystal palace game happened which i think was in the last episode it just felt like okay this is the start of us stumbling a little bit um and then we played liverpool is that the game gomez got injured in no gomez got injured he a two-month injury um, or it was supposed to be a two-month injury. He might actually be back later in this episode. But Gomez got injured pretty much immediately after the Liverpool game. And from there, it did all go a little bit wrong. We lost to Swansea 4-3. Um, we did manage to beat Stoke, um, but then lost to Brighton, drew against Leeds, lost to Watford. Um, it's not been going very well. Not only have we got the problem with Gomez being injured, but we've also having we've got a bit of a Janino problem going on. Um, he's currently back in Brazil on leave. Um, he, if you remember, we signed him in January. He's supposed to be an absolute superstar. Signed him in January. Um, he spent the whole of January in Brazil for the Olympic qualifying. He was with us about three days before he decided he was homesick and wanted to go back to Brazil again. So um, he's currently back in Brazil. Um, he did manage to make one substitute appearance on the wing during that three days. Um, he wasn't anything special. And I, I don't know, hopefully he'll settle. He's moaning that I, pro I promised to bring in someone to help him settle at the club. He's now lost trust in me, apparently. Um, as part of his transfer, I promised to bring in people to help him settle at the club. I assumed the fact that he's Brazilian and we've already got like five Brazilians, that that would get the job done apparently not i should have brought in someone specifically from his former club um so he's now unhappy that i didn't do that and he's struggling to settle in the area so janino might not work out we might end up just flipping him and selling him on in the summer there were big clubs interested in him when we first started scouting him but by the time he came to us no one else was in for him um and i do worry that perhaps i mean he's got a light-hearted personality apparently he might end up being an absolute superstar if i remember back to home last year i think we had a similar issue with mira where he couldn't even get a work permit for his first two years. He was unhappy. It looked like he was never going to be any good for us. And then eventually, final year of his contract, seemed to just settle down pretty much as he hit 21. Settled down, got in the team, got a new contract, went on to be a hero. So it might be that Janino is more of a long-term project. We'll see how things work out with him. We did do um, some other transfer business before the window slammed shut, though, Um we sold quite a few players. Um, we already know about Anatovic going out and we sold one of the youth players who was never going to make it. But um, two two sort of first team regulars from last year have gone. Uh, Mile Minic, um, our new record sale, £27.5 million. He's gone to Leicester. Um, he was another one of these where I thought, you know what? We've got better than him now. He's only played seven games this year. He only started two of those seven games. Although he was a good regular player for us last year, he let cost us less than three million. We've sold him on for nearly thirty million, and he's a reserve. Couldn't really turn it down, and it was a similar kind of uh, logic for Quero, who went to Rangers for nine and a half million. Um, signed him for. I mean, we didn't make much of a profit on him, but brought him in, and he was a he was a solid member of the squad last year. Hasn't really featured at all this year, so let's cash in on him while he's still got some kind of value. Um, and then we used the money that we brought in from those to uh, to sign a couple more youngsters. I think we got as far as Janino in the last episode, but we also brought in Ben Andrews. This one's Marlon Pack signing, so if this is good, it's his fault. If it's bad, it's his fault. But Ben Andrews came in from Forest for £3.2 million. 
Um, and also we signed as another youngster, Fadi El Sayed, who's an 18 year old Egyptian striker. Already got 11 caps for Egypt at age 18. Um, he came in for £725,000. Again, just because he's 18, so he will become homegrown um, over the course of the next three years as long as we don't loan him out. And in the interest of homegrown players, um, James Keane, this is a player who we were chasing from back when he left Liverpool. We actually had a, the same deal arranged that Celtic had when we were down in the Championship and he chose to go to Celtic. Um, we eventually get him three years later for 10 times the price. Um, obviously, he's not homegrown at club, but he is homegrown in England, which is arguably more important at this stage than getting homegrown at club players because we need to be able to get four homegrown at club players together for a, Euro a European squad and I think we could just about do that um, but you need eight homegrown in nation players and that's where we'll struggle a little bit but Keane adding to that number means now in our first team squad that's the wrong button I don't even know what I pressed there um what have I I'm, I'm on the wrong drop down if we go to our homegrown players so homegrown Looking for homegrown in nation, we've now got one, two, and now Tovich is another one. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight, with one more. So Amlang becomes homegrown at club this summer. So he could then go into that eight as well. So we could potentially let one of these leave. Obviously, in these two, we've got Oatway and Robinson. Robinson, I think we're going to have to buy just for homegrown reasons. Oatway probably won't be here next year. So Amlang joins that number. So, I mean, there's a there's strong arguments for not selling Anatovic and not selling Reed, who is also keen to leave because he's not getting any game time. Um, Sir Alan Hardy as well in that number. But we need to either bring in some homegrown in-nation players in the summer or keep this little group of players so that we can at least get something resembling a first-team squad for if we're in Europe next year. And it is looking pretty likely that we're going to be in some flavour of European football. Um, we are clinging on to a Champions League spot. I mean, yes, we're still in second place at the moment, but Man United uh, level on points with us with a game in hand. City only one point behind us now, although we've got a game in hand on them. Um, and Arsenal only five points behind us, as are Chelsea. And we are in terrible form. If we have a look at the form table, uh, no, not the season preview, um, somewhere you can look at form. Last five games, we are down in 16th place and everyone else who's trying to chase us is doing really well, apart from Arsenal, who are also crumbling a little bit. But I'm su I would suggest we're more likely to be in the Europa League than the, than the Champions League. But we will, uh, we will see how things turn out. Let's go and play Norwich because the main priority is to try and win the FA Cup now. If we can win the FA Cup, regardless of where we finish in the league, I think that would be considered a good season. So we're going with Mazzinho in goal. I know I said Sir Alan Hardy was my FA Cup goalkeeper. If you didn't see the episode where he showed why he shouldn't be anymore from last season, go back and watch that one for reference. Um, so Mazzinho in goal, a back for a regular De Silva, Henschel and Orlando. Samiento and Oatway in midfield. He should be on a defence instruction. Zimmerman, Ricardo and Serna Jackie behind Gervin up front because um, we've still not got Gomez or Janino available. Serna Jackie um, is now show that, I mean, look at the clubs who are interested in him. This shows how good Serna Jackie is. He, he's leaving this summer, almost certainly. Man United, PSG, Bayern and Barcelona all in for Serna Jackie. It's like a who's who of who are your elite level, super rich clubs. My first instinct on seeing that was to try and offer him a new contract, which he was willing to discuss a new contract. The only issue is, as part of the new contract, yes, I mean, he wanted a pay rise, which is fine. He can have a pay rise, but he wanted to lower the minimum fee release clause to like 90 million. Um, and he just would not agree. So uh, we managed to get it up to 100 million over the summer. Um, I am going to stick to my guns. We've got three years left on the contract for Serna Jackie and all the best clubs in Europe want him. So someone's going to have to pay his £100 million release clause this summer. And I think it's probably going to happen, which is both exciting and a little worrying. I'd say it's, it's arguably more exciting than worrying. We're little old born. We're not supposed to keep the likes of Cerna Jackie at the club. Three, four, five years down the line when we get players like that, yeah, we're trying to build a team that's going to win the league at the moment. We've got a 12,500 capacity stadium. We've never played a game of European football um, yes, we're bringing in lots of wonder kids, but a lot of them are with a view to moving them on for big money and using that to to keep us afloat financially. We'll just have to make sure we go and find the next Cerner Jackie 
wherever he might be. I, I think the chances of us finding another one that good are probably fairly slim. Um, Norwich are now one nil up against us as well as our poor form continues. I am going to be very sad if we get knocked out of the FA Cup just because it's happened to fall at a time when we're struggling. I mean, it shows how much, shows just how much we rely on Gomez. Uh, we, it's Cerner Jackie who's getting all the headlines and getting all the interest from the big clubs, but Gomez is the one where as soon as he's as soon as he's not been available, our form has just disappeared. We absolutely rely on his goals, and without him there banging in almost a goal a game. We do not look like the same team. Gervin, not the answer, it seems. I guess I could give Amlang a little bit of game time to see if see if he might be. I mean, he ha- you saw from the schedule that Amlang has played a few games as well. And I mean, he scored more goals than Gervin, but doesn't look any more threatening. He's not. He's neither of them are Gomez, and I don't think either of them are ever going to be Gomez. I think Gomez is a bit of a freak because even in the comments section. It's a rare thing we all agree on. Um, nobody can see from his attributes what makes him as good as he is. He's just obviously got some kind of special combination of hidden attributes where he's just one of these players that comes along every now and again who there's no logic behind how well he plays. He just is, he plays well above what his attributes suggest he should be able to do. Similarly, he plays well above his star rating level. So he's just got, he's just got something that makes him a little bit special in the match engine even though looking at him, it's not massively obvious what that something is. The advantage of that is that it means the big clubs aren't showing any interest in him. So he's potentially someone we could keep for a long, long, long time and just have him banging in goals for fun for a long time and nobody really noticing he exists, which would be the perfect scenario, really. Um, If all players were like that, we'd win the Champions League within the next two or three years because we wouldn't have to sell anybody. Right, we are, here's me talking of winning the Champions League, and we're tr- struggling to get past Norwich. Zimmerman now, on this left-hand side, plays it back to Samiento, um, who finds Ricardo. Ricardo over the top to Regulus, who's on the overlap here. He's got Gervin and Serna Jackie in the middle. There is Serna Jackie, and there's his eighth goal of the season. Now, bearing in mind, this boy hadn't scored by Christmas because he was out of form and injured. Um, you can see just how much he is stepping up to try and fill the void left by the absence of Gomez. Um, he's He's been the best player on the pitch every single game since January and he's scoring a lot of goals during that time as well. And it's now Bourne 1, Norwich 1 as we cruise towards half time and try and come up with a plan to get us ahead in this game in the second half. Or could we do it just before? Serna Jackie with the corner. The ball's bobbling around in the area. Samiento is the one who applies the finish. And I would, I mean, I was going to say it's a little bit against the run of play, but actually looking at the stats, we've dominated everything. We've had four clear cut chances to their none. They've only had one shot on target and they scored from it. We've dominated everything. And I think that's actually just what we've deserved. And it's a tidy little finish from Samiento in the end. And it's 2-1 at half time. Well, that might be the longest half time break anyone's ever had in history. The doorbell rang just as half time was happening. And I, uh, <laughs> I ended up taking delivery of one of these, which is a floodlight that I'm going to be using to light my stream backgrounds. But it doesn't have a plug on it. I've never wired a plug. So I ended up on a wild goose chase that is involved going to buy pl- this is a reason to watch the stream tonight rather than forget the little the cheap little plug at the start if i'm streaming tonight it means i didn't set fire to my house setting that up um and if it works you're going to see some cool lighting or hear the story for why the cool lighting didn't work and how I electrocuted myself and spent several days in hospital, probably. Right, Zimmerman to Ricardo. Gervin, or Gervin, we still haven't decided what his actual name is, but there he is with a goal. It's his fifth of the season. I said he's not much of a goal scorer, but I'd be surprised if he started five games. So he's actually not doing too badly. I think I'm just kind of unfairly comparing him to Gomez, but he's a he's a proper wonder kid who's in his first season in the country, still doesn't speak the language, hasn't had many opportunities, and there he is, tucking away his fifth goal of the season. He's another one who's who's almost certain, not almost certainly, but I think he's he's pretty likely to come good. Look, Norwich showing off a wonder kid of their own now, bringing him on. It's too little, too late, Norwich, unless you score a really good free kick. 
and then we've got 28 minutes left and it's 3-2. Maybe it's not too little. To, I'm surprised how few Norwich fans are here, actually. I thought for the FA Cup there had to be uh, a certain allocation to away fans, but they've only got 5% of our capacity as their allocation, which which seems too low, unless, I guess, they didn't sell theirs and they went back on sale to Bourne fans because we're sellouts all the time. That's how we roll. Right, to Silva, to Regulus. Regulus playing it forward, looking for Zimmerman, but didn't actually get anywhere near him. Um, and now it comes back down this this left-hand side again. They've got a Gomez of their own. This is troublesome. Oh, this is what happens when I say it's too little, too late. They're going to batter us now, aren't they? They've certainly come back into They've enjoyed the break while I was faffing around at the DIY shop buying plugs. Um, we need to make a change. I'll, I'll, try, I'll try not to leave a two-hour gap between game pauses this time. Right, we've got no one wide to come on which is a bit of a problem. I guess what we could do is put Ricardo out wide and get Robinson in there, which just gives us something a little bit different. And in fact, we could bring Amlang on and stick Guven out wide, although I'm just glancing further up to see what's going on up here. The defence is struggling a little bit. So let's actually bring Ansong on for now, who can uh, who can come and provide us a little bit more defensive stability at right back than Orlando does. Orlando's great going forward. He's very much a prototype Kev style right back because he will fly up and down that right wing. Brilliant attacking. Um, he really can't defend though. He's like the right footed version of Kongni that we've got on the left. And over time, we've gradually replaced Kongni with Regulus because he can actually defend. And I guess Ansong might end up surpassing... Orlando on the same basis. We what we really want is a is the complete fullback who can do the attacking and the defending, but they're quite expensive. And they, oh, I should never have said too little, too late. Where's my coffee? I need to make myself feel better. Twenty minutes to go. Norwich have now got themselves firmly back into the game. Don't ever be too confident in a football match, boys and girls. It doesn't end well for you. Oh, oh. It's horrible. Yes, do you tactical changes. What else have we got? We've got Kongni. We've got Amlang. They're the only two remotely attacking changes we've got. Um, I think Kongni in midfield. Get some more energy in there for Oatway. Um, Samiento can drop back to a defensive playmaker. Um, and Kongni can just try and get up and involved in the, the attack a little bit more. We really don't want to replay. Replays are a pain in the backside. So let's... Let's go to attacking as well. I'd, I'd, I'd almost rather get knocked out. Than that. That's not true. We want to win this cup. Um, Robinson's in here. Robinson couldn't quite get the shot away. Um, and it's going to be a corner. Robinson looks like he's going to be the one who goes across to take it. It is Robinson. He's going to be aiming for an in-swinger to that far post where De Silva should be lurking. Fingers crossed. It all comes to plan. There is De Silva. Um, set piece instructions working then. The only problem is the header wasn't very good. And it looks like it is going to be a replay against Norwich. So I promised you two Norwich games in this episode. You're definitely getting two. It's just you're not going to see the one in the league. Norwich at 18th in the league. This really shows how much we are struggling all of a sudden. Um, because we can't get past a team 18th in the league. Well, replay. Fixture rearrangements. So I guess we now play Norwich three times in a row. Do we? We do. What, an ex what, a, what a time to be a Norwich fan. All these wonder kids coming to town. We may as well, we're going to get hotels in Norwich and we're going to make, we're going to make a week of it and it's going to be lovely. So replay time. Um, winner gets Watford in the quarterfinals, by the way. Um, and we just have one more person added to our huge list of unavailable people. Uh, Leon Henschel suspended. So Keane comes in to make his debut. And out of each news, by the way. Um, he's not having the best of times in Germany. In his first two games for Wolfsburg, he got sent off in both of them. Um, and then he got a hip injury and is out for three months. So he's out for the rest of the season. So their full experience of Dinko and Outovic at Wolfsburg. I don't think he'll be welcome back in the Bundesliga. Um, two starts, two red cards, and then injured for the rest of the season. He'll be back with us next year. I think it's fairly safe to say. Uh, right, let's have a look to see what Keane looks like um, as part of a slightly new look defence. We're still not ready to have uh, Gomez back in the team. Maybe he might be ready for the league game against Norwich, which of course you're not going to see um, because that's going to be uh, that's going to be taking place at the weekend. 
which we're not we're not doing a three match episode because I don't know that I need to inflict Bourne versus Norwich on you three times in one episode. Twice is plenty. Um, so it's Norwich with an early corner. Mazzinho's there to just pluck it out of the sky and hopefully uh, get things get things moving forward again. Uh, Zimmerman picks it up on the left-hand side from the goal kick. The highlight's continuing here, which suggests something is afoot. Cerner Jackie drifting past his man. That's a weird choice for a save from the Norwich goalkeeper, just kind of letting it hit his shin and then spent a little while trying to work out what to do with the ball once it was there. Uh, oh, can't speak now. But once he did figure out what to do with it, he uh, he cleared it. And then Norwich have gone up the other end and very nearly scored. But thankfully, the ball has ended up being cleared. But it's Norwich again with a throw. They're, go they're doing the long throws as well. Long throw cheats. How dare they? Um, and they're trying to get the ball back into the air again here. And it was coming. They'd had all the early chances. And there is the first goal for Norwich. Very, very sad. Let's have a look at the replay and work out where it all went wrong. So it all came from the long throw um, and they just kept hold of the ball from it. We're chasing around all over the place. I'm going to blame it on a disorganised defence um, and not just on the fact that we are, we're a team in free fall and we're just desperately hoping for our star man to come back before we uh, before we fall even further. They've got a free kick now on the edge of the area. Mazzino, please just make the save. He does make the save, pushes it behind for a corner. But of course, that is another set piece for Norwich to try and come at us with. And that's what's happening. Corner coming in from the right-hand side. And it's not cleared. Ricardo's going to get there, I think, though. And we've got the opportunity for a counter-attack here. Ricardo charging down the right-hand side. Gervin is in the middle as well. Um, Zimmerman, I'm hoping, has come up to join them both. Um, cross comes all the way over to Regulus, who's joined in the attack. He crosses it back again. Cerner Jackie's there, but it is straight at the goalkeeper. And that's twice now Cerner Jackie has had chances to score. And just, they've gone straight at the goalkeeper. I was going to say straight into the goalkeeper's hands, but of course the first time, he just let it hit him in the shin. Orlando now hurls the ball into the penalty area. Cerner Jackie's there again. And I don't even know how that one's not gone in. That must have hit the post. We have been chalked up with having one woodwork. So he's hit the post there now. Cerner Jackie getting closer and closer to a breakthrough for us. Uh, Keane now looking to give it back to the man himself who plays it into Gervin, who's in behind here. Can uh, mm, Also straight at their goalkeeper. That's our first clear-cut chance of the day. And it was just not even close to being taken. It was it was pathetic what we did with that. And now Norwich, just before half time, trying to uh, trying to extend their lead and grab our goal just before half time, just like we did in the first match. And they shoot from range, but Mazzino is equal to it. And at half time, we're one nil down and in very real danger of getting knocked out of the FA Cup in the fifth fifth round. I think that's what we're playing in. Cerner Jackie's having a terrible game. I think that's more a reflection that he's missed several chances rather than he's been awful. He's been our most dangerous looking threat. I think sometimes the uh, sometimes the ratings in this game leave a little to be desired. You get the same thing with goalkeepers. Um, they only have a good game when you lose 6-0 because they're involved in lots of action and make lots of saves. Right. Um, oh, we don't really have... Right, we're going to bring Amlang on and stick... A Gervin, Gervin, Gervin out on the right hand side. Just get Serna Jackie off. He was getting tired. He's not playing well. We don't want to ruin his confidence for the rest of the season. It is more important that we that we do well in league games and have a cup run because we've got the opportunity to force our way into Europe. Which, of course, because of the glitch on the database, winning the FA Cup won't get us into Europe anyway. So it's not actually as important as it would be maybe in another year. But let's. Um, Let's go attacking anyway. We've got to try. We've got to try and win it. We want some silverware. Um, Bourne have never won a proper competition, like a, a top-tier competition of any kind. This could be a first big boy trophy to go in our trophy cabinet. I'd like to demand more, but I'm not being given the option to do it. It's Orlando to take the throw, hurls it forward, and all it does is leads to a, a Bourne, a, a, we're Bourne, a Norwich counter-attack immediately. There's their second goal, and... This hasn't gone to plan today, boys and girls. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, ball over the top. Same old story. If you've been watching the channel for a few a few years, you'll recognise that goal. We concede it all the time. 
Um, right. Let's get Cogney on then. He can play on that right wing. Not the ideal position to bring him on into. We'll demand more, but I think this this has gone. We've we've gone without without uh, Gomez. There's just nothing. There's nothing. We don't have that that oomph. And they're in again here. And I mean, if Norwich had been a good side, we'd be they'd be home and dry. I mean, they kind of are with two minutes to go at two 0 But we've um, we've not looked like threatening. As soon as as soon as it was clear Cerner Jackie was having a bad day, it was pretty clear we were going to have a bad day. We really, really need Gomez back and quick. I think he will be back for the next game, actually, because I think there's an international break coming up. No, there's not. It's just a weird... Oh, I was going to say weirdly a weekend off, but I guess that's when the quarterfinal would be played, maybe. How close are we to messing up the league? Just cross everything that in tomorrow's episode I'm showing you as securing Europe. We're probably going to come through to... We might do the last four episodes over the next couple of that last last four matches over the next couple of episodes is it is going to be tight for European qualification unless we get to that Man City and Chelsea game and we're down in seventh because we've lost every game, in which case I'll just come back for the last couple. It's not been a good run of form. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily football manager videos and thank you very much for watching. 